We show how to print ABS on the original Prusa i3 Mark III, smooth the 3D prints using acetone vapor and use a clean box to avoid dust deposits. A large cooking pot with a glass lid is a perfect vapor chamber. It nicely confines the acetone and allows to use cold and hot vapors. We use a paper towel as a diffuser to create cold acetone vapors and a metal mesh waste paper basket to keep the paper towel in place while providing a quite large inner space. Long exposures to acetone vapors allows the acetone to get into the 3D prints, weakening the structure of the objects. Therefore, 3D prints should not be touched until they are completely hardened again. We use a stainless steel steamer basket and a glass plate for easy handling of the objects. The acetone vapors resolve the surface of the 3D prints. Therefore, any deposits on the surface should be avoided until the surface has hardened. We built a clean box out of a cardboard box using an air filter, a handheld vacuum cleaner and some duct tape to close any holes. We can finish 3D prints well up to 25 cm in diameter and 25 cm in height. We download a spiral vase 8 cm in diameter and 15 cm tall with quite some surface area from Thingiverse. And we then take the STL file and generate the G-code file in Prusa control. We use Prusa ABS with optimal quality and a solid fill. The original Prusa i3 Mark III provides great support for ABS printing. ABS printing is sensitive to uncontrolled cooling, which can cause heavy warping. Therefore, ABS printing requires an enclosure. The Pinder probe on the original Prusa i3 Mark III is temperature sensitive. Using an enclosure and leaving the extruder with the Pinder probe close to the print bed when heating it up to 100 degrees Celsius for ABS can cause problems. Therefore, we do not preheat the enclosure. Place the extruder high above the print bed before heating it up and keep the door of the enclosure open for the first layers. In Octopi, we upload the G-code file and start the print. When changing filaments that require different print bed temperatures, Z may need to be adjusted. When we change from PLA with 60 degrees Celsius to ABS with 100 degrees Celsius, we needed to do a Z adjustment of about minus 0.04 millimeters. Requiring larger Z adjustments are an indication that the Pinder probe has temperature problems and the print should be aborted. After the first few layers, we will close the door of the enclosure.
Depending on the 3D print, we may want to do some post-processing using sandpaper, or heat gun. A trick to accelerate the application of acetone vapors to the surface of 3D prints is to use the effect of condensation on cold surfaces. Therefore, we put our 3D print into a freezer. Dealing with acetone requires special care and safety precautions. Acetone is a highly flammable liquid and vapor, and exposure can be irritating and painful. Please review proper handling and use appropriate protections. The concentration of the acetone vapors is an important factor. We use a minimum of 150 milliliter of acetone for our cooking pot with a volume of 20 liter. And pour it on the paper towels that are used as a diffuser to create cold acetone vapors. After one hour, we take the 3D print out of the freezer. Now we start the exposure of the 3D print to the acetone vapors. The exposure time is an important factor. We use a kitchen timer to keep track of time. Heating up the acetone will increase the concentration of acetone vapors. A stove, or as shown here, a heat gun can be used. But caution, acetone and acetone vapors are highly flammable. Using a frozen 3D print, there's instant condensation of acetone vapors on the surface. Acetone processing requires a compromise between smoothing and being able to keep the details. Acetone has an effect on the 3D prints even after they have been taken out of the vapors. Therefore, we take them out early enough, always being able to put them back if needed. We take our 3D print directly from the cooking pot into our clean box. All dust has been eliminated in the clean box. As the vacuum cleaner is sucking out the air on one side, a new air only gets through the air filter into the box from the other side, thereby also providing good ventilation. After one hour, the surface has hardened and we can put the 3D print into a well-ventilated place until it has completely hardened, which can take a day or so. We are able to print and finish objects of various sizes, larger objects like this spiral vase, or small objects like the tree fork that we use as our 3D printing benchmark. Here we used 150 milliliter of acetone, no freezer, no heating, and left it in cold acetone vapors for 12 hours. With such a long time exposed to acetone, the object structure became quite soft. Just using the freezer allowed us to take the 3D print out of the cold acetone vapors after only one to two hours. Check out our filament webpage with pictures of our 3D printing benchmark, the tree frog, using different filaments.